The Theft By Ron Hansen While he was waiting in the kitchen, the police sergeant got out a Marlboro cigarette and hunted a match. His name was Dunn, and he was assisting the burglary investigation unit of the San Jose Police Department. He was mustached and gray and 36 years old, dressed in a stiff navy blue uniform whose pleats seemed sharp as paring knives. Dunn opened a dessert service drawer and then a drawer with torn coupons and hand tools and batteries in it. Dunn stared at the hand tools for a good while before closing the drawer again. At last he went to the stovetop and held his cigarette inside the puttering ring of green and blue flame. He turned off the gas flame and took a hard drag on the cigarette as he looked at the fresh pumpkin orange paint on the kitchen walls. Chatter was loud on the radio hand pack attached to his belt, so he turned it down. He exhaled gray tobacco smoke. She'd put wine glasses in the kitchen sink, the four rims all stained with pink lipsticks. She finished her shower and hurried in, holding shut a white terry cloth robe as she considered the policeman. Her blonde hair was wetly brown, and the tracks of the comb were still in it. She seemed surprised to see him there, though she'd heard his voice and invited him inside when he called to her from the kitchen porch. Took a while, she said. Wasn't an emergency, just a burglary. You weren't in danger, were you? Skip it, she said. She tilted away from his too interested attention and sat down on a kitchen chair. Just tell me how it happened, the police sergeant said. Linda sighed. Like I told the flake on the theft detail, I was just coming back from the grocery store. I parked the car in the alley and carried the stuff up the back porch steps and inside and he must have followed me. Was the door unlocked? Sure. I mean, I unlocked it. With my house keys. You have them? She tried to remember what she'd done with them and then turned to check the ajar kitchen door. She stood up and frantically peered at the kitchen table, the white pantry countertop, and the child's knee-hole desk that she usually put her mail on. Are the house keys gone, too? She looked at him with panic. You opened the door with your house keys, the police sergeant said. Your hands were full. You may have left the house keys in the door and carried the groceries inside. Yes, I suppose so. She gazed at the door. That's really terrifying. You could change the locks again, Dunn said. He tapped the jagged ash from his cigarette into his palm, then carried the ash to a wrinkled grocery sack on the floor. She asked him, Aren't you supposed to be writing this down? Sergeants get rookies to do their paperwork, that's one of the good parts of the job. Congratulations, she said. About time, Dunn said, and looked at the furniture in the front room and hallway, then leaned against the kitchen doorway and crossed his forearms and ankles. What else? A flock of sparrows flashed up in the yard and she followed their flight until they completely disappeared in the east. She said, You'd think you'd have a feeling that an unfamiliar person was in the house with you, but I didn't. Everything seemed so normal until I heard the spring on the back door. Dunn walked over and pushed open the screen door to hear the noise. The iron spring was orange with rust and rang slightly as it dragged against the wood. Like that, but not so much, Linda said. You could hardly hear it. Right. You looked behind you, though. And nobody was there, Linda said. And? And I put away the groceries. Wind, I thought. You heard the door. Was that him sneaking in or him sneaking out? I have no way of knowing. When did you notice your purse had been stolen? Exactly? You reported a theft at a quarter past three. Well, I suppose I hunted around for 15 minutes or so before I was positive that I hadn't simply mislaid it. Any idea of the contents? My checkbook. Wallet and credit cards. Lipstick. Kleenex. Hand cream. Junk mostly, except for the wallet. And there was just a few dollars in that. 
the policeman took his cigarette to the kitchen faucet and killed it with a jolt of water. Was it expensive, that purse? She perused him and said, Extremely. Was my picture still in it? She shook her head. Dunn peered out through the four-paned window just above the kitchen sink. A fat, aproned woman was kneeling in her garden next door and putting flower bulbs with a trowel. She sat back on her haunches and shaded her face from the sunshine. I'm trying to imagine how you must have felt, Dunn said. You must have felt like there was a ghost in the house. Haunting you. Watching every move you made. Stealing your purse and your keys. And you didn't even know it. You're enjoying this, aren't you? Linda asked, but from the hard intensity of his frown she could tell he was not. A half minute of silence passed between them, and he said, You've painted. Yes. Looks nice. And then the rent went up. Much? Fifty bucks. Still a good deal, he said. Linda stood up and got a diet cola from the hot point refrigerator. She snapped it open and sipped from it. She asked, Was it a coincidence that you came? I heard the address on the radio. And you decided to give it your personal attention. He turned up his hand pack and heard a rookie patrolman reading information from motor vehicle registration papers, and then he lowered the volume again. Shall I figure it for you? She sipped her cola. You're the cop. You got a guy thinks you're a hot stuff, he said. You knew him once maybe, but he isn't getting anywhere with you now. Wants to, though. Would like to let you know he's still around. Looking out for you. And then he sees you getting your groceries. Wonders about talking to you but doesn't. Hangs out, just waiting for you to get into your car. Still doesn't make his move. And so he follows you here. You surprise him. You stun him, probably. Here he's been on your tail for an hour and you haven't seen a hint of him. And you've been the only thing beside himself that he's looked at or thought about. So he steals your purse like a kid writes his name on the sidewalk just to say he exists. And he takes my house keys to tell me he'll be back. She could have counted to 100 in the silence, and then Dunn asked, How are things? Getting better. Yeah? Yeah. You happy? Up and down. You know. Having fun? Off and on. Seeing anybody? She shrugged. Any chance? Who knows? Linda said. Okay, he said. Your purse is in the milk box outside. He put his hand in his pocket and took out her house keys and handed them to her. You watch it, he said. And she said, You. The end. Is there a story you want to hear? Leave it in the comments below. Thanks for watching.